any rate, we'll lock this room and leave everything as it is until the police come. No objections, I take it. Nancy announced it as though she didn't care whether they agreed or not. If anyone had a right to object, it would have been George. He looked as though he'd shed enough tears. George nodded slightly, still facing away from the others. And when he stood up, everyone else agreed too. Nancy still hadn't opened that western envelope with the family head that she'd picked up. But now that they decided to leave this room, she decided to unseal it in the parlor, where everyone could watch. As soon as they walked out into the hallway to head back to the parlor, some of them immediately felt something out of place, or maybe sensed something strange. Oh? Oh, is it the painting? Uh, stinks. Ah, did you notice it too, Maria? Sorry, say, what's with that smell? That's awful. When everyone sniffed the air, they did notice a horrible burnt smell drifting through the hallway, one that none of them had smelled until then. So something's happening in the kitchen then? Or something got lit on fire, I don't know. I will go quickly check the kitchen. I'm sure I turned the flame off. After noticing a burnt smell, it was natural that Kumasawa, who had just been using the burner in the kitchen, suspected that her own slip-up had caused it. Kumasawa hastily dashed away. Come on, go with Kumasawa. Do not let her be alone. Y yes After nodding again, she's ordered, Kanon followed after her. He wasn't running, but as he followed her, he tried to search for the cause of the smell in other directions as well. Uh, stinks. Uh. It truly is a stench that makes the nose wrinkle. However, that doesn't mean we can just open a window for ventilation. Nancy was reluctant to open the windows in a situation where self-defense was so important. Let us run the fan. I do not believe there will be any need to open the windows. George Anaki. Is it okay if I talk to you? About finding the culprit, then I have no problems. It seemed that George had managed to climb out of the abyss of sorrow. All that filled his chest now was the quiet flame of hatred towards the culprit who had stolen the lives of the one he loved and his beloved parents. The chain for this room was set. From what I could tell by looking at it, I'm positive that it couldn't be opened from the outside. In other words, this was a perfect closed room. That does seem to be the case. In the case of the Rose Garden storehouse, they might have sneaked the shutter's key out of the servant room. Or maybe they had a duplicate key. I can imagine many ways they could have done it. But this chain is different. Among generally used locking techniques, a chain is the simplest one to create a closed room with. Only a chain will block everyone while coming from the outside as long as it isn't physically broken. So does this mean the culprit couldn't have gone in or out through the door? That's interesting. Just a few hours ago, I seem to remember everyone making a fuss over how to enter a room without using the door. Back then, we were all losing our cool, wondering how Grandfather had disappeared from his room. The receipt Aunt Ava stuck in the door on a whim proved that the door had remained sealed. And since Aunt Nazi was the only person to enter or exit during that time, she was under suspicion. Aunt Ava proposed a theory about how Aunt Nazi might have thrown her grandfather out the window and left the door by le and left by the door herself. But this door is much simpler. It was sealed from the inside by the door chain. The window had also been locked from the inside, and the body's been inside the room. This time it really had been, without exaggeration, a true closed room. That's right. If you include Grandfather's disappearance, three cases have occurred, and all three times the door has been the point of interest. Oh? Okay. The first was the shutter. There was a key in the server room, and if we assume someone knew about it, this can't really be called a closed room. The next was the door sealed by the receipt. However, Aunt Nazi entered that room. So if Grandfather had left through the window or been thrown out, she would have been able to lock the door, the lock the window before escaping. Or, like my theory, Grandfather could have hidden until the receipt was gone and left the room later. Basically, this door can be defeated with a handful of desperate tricks. In that sense, you really can't call this one a closed room either. But however, and now we have the door sealed with the door chain. Finally, we have to give up. The window, the door, everything had been locked. It was a perfect closed room. The first hadn't been a closed room because everyone could be suspected. The second had been a closed room because Aunt Nazi could be suspected. But this time, no one could be suspected. This was a perfect closed room because the door chain formed a seal that blocked everyone equally well. It's almost like this is a job only a witch could have done. <gasps> In that case, did the culprit carry out the crime without entering the room? What's the method from the outside room? From outside the room. Good point. Even though the chain makes it impossible to open it wide enough for a person to fit through, 
You can open a small crack. Did the culprit knock on the door to make them peer out before attacking them? Wait, am I missing something? Yeah, you are. If Aunt Ava's body had been lying right next to the door, then it might have been possible. But she was on the bed at the back of the room. And Uncle Hideyoshi was even in the bathroom. Looking from the crack in the door, you couldn't even see them. You couldn't even reach them with your hands either. Damn it, it's all useless. I don't have a clue. Something was tugging softly at my sleeve, Maria. It was Maria, yep. <laughs> oh, I know. Eh. Satisfied? Yep. Yeah, now Maria's gloating, like... There's this horrible fucking shit happening, Maria's just like, yeah. Only a witch could have done it, right, bitch? What do you mean, satisfied? <laughs> Paddler, since you didn't want to suspect any of your relatives, you made a wish, saying you wanted the culprit to be Beatrice, right? Well, Beatrice, well, Beatrice granted that wish. Just as you asked, she did something that was completely impossible for a human to make you believe in the witch. And now you're complaining? How selfish. <laughs> Ouch! I tapped Maria, who was laughing unpleasantly on the head with my fist. Sure, thanks for granting that wish. I just now was to thank you, and also teach you to stop laughing when it's inappropriate. More importantly, tell me. There was another mysterious scribble on the door to Aunt Ava and Uncle Hideyoshi's room. Was that another magic circle? <laughs> that one had a really memorable and characteristic design, so I'd hoped you'd at least know what it was. Ouch! I don't know, which is why I'm letting you take the credit. Quit whining and explain. <laughs> you sure are violent, battler. I won't tell you if you're too mean, get it? Ouch! Ugh, I'll say it! I'll say it! Stop hitting me! That's the first magic circle of the moon. What does it mean? What is this magic circle's effect? What does the Hebrew writing mean? The words are from the Old Testament, Psalms 107, verse 16. For he has broken gates of brass and cuts through bars of iron. This magic circle has two effects. First, it can open a door regardless of which method it has been used to lock it. That sure, that sure is convenient. So you're saying they're trying to make it look like they're a witch because this closed room has a door that can't be opened without relying on magic. And the other effect? When you're blocked by unopenable doors in all directions, it opens the door. By using it in a difficult situation, it gives you a solution that you hadn't even thought of until then. Generally speaking, you receive the powers of observation and discernment, inspiration and intuition. <laughs> Beatrice is trying to provoke you, since there's no way little humans like Badler can figure out how this door was opened. <laughs> Ouch! Okay, good work. So shut up. Sounds great. I'll accept this challenge from the witch. Maria chan. Things like witches and demons don't exist in this world. Someone killed father and mother. I don't know whether that was someone I know or not. Either way, it was definitely a human. Yeah, but how? How did they reach those two through that crack in the door? I couldn't have been more than 10 centimeters wide. At any rate, I can hardly stand the stench. What in the world could it be? Are we about to find out? Someone's gonna come running down the hall? Kana and Kumasawa have gone on ahead, realized the smell wasn't coming from the kitchen even before they arrived there. That was because they noticed an even thicker wave of stench rising up from the stairs leading to the basement, which they passed on their way to the kitchen. The boiler room. I wonder if there's something wrong with the boiler again. Those stairs led to the underground boiler room. The mansion's boiler was old and in poor condition. Both of them had witnessed problems with the boiler on several occasions, but they never smelled the boiler belching out a stench like this before. Oh shit, or is it the six corpses? Slam. <laughs> what was that sound? The thing they heard from the basement was definitely the sound of a door closing. Kumasawa had phrased it as a question. Oh wait, that was Kumasawa. But she already knew it couldn't be anything else. Kumasawa was so surprised at the sound that her knees gave way yet again and she cowered. After all, at that very moment, no one could have been in the boiler room. Just a few seconds ago, everyone had been crowded together around Eva and Hideyoshi's room. So who caused the sound of a door closing just now? Karatsan. After taking a second to sort out the situation, Kano ran down towards the basement. Since they'd heard the sound of a door closing just now, there was no sign of anyone coming up the stairs. The person who closed the door had to be inside the boiler room now. If the boiler room had been a dead end, Kana wouldn't have rushed in so hastily. But Kana was a servant, so he knew. There were two entrances to the boiler room. One that opened to the mansion, one that opened to the courtyard. 
If you didn't chase them now, they might slip away. Kumasawa reached the same conclusion long after Cannon did. But she couldn't let him go alone. If the thing in the boiler room was the culprit, an opponent who had easily killed six adults in the first murder, and no matter how Kanon confronted them, he wouldn't be a match. Of course, with this argument, even if Kumasawa joined him, it wouldn't change anything. At any rate, after a delay, Kumasawa decided that she mustn't let Kanon go alone. She rushed down the stairs. At that time, Kanon was already in the boiler room. The boiler room's characteristic damp heat tormented him. It had always been an unpleasantly smelly and hot place. And on top of that room was full of that horrible stench, which made Kanon feel like he was going to be sick. There was no doubt about this that this room was the source. In that case, Kanon should have been searching for where the smell was coming from. However, Kanon kept gazing straight forward as he grabbed a hatchet from the tool shelf, just off to the side of the door. He then stretched out his hand because he wanted a hatchet. He wanted to grab a weapon. Any weapon. Why? Kanon gazed into the darkness where the naked light bulb couldn't pierce. Then he answered. In roulette, you put in a number of the colors, red or black, vying for a payoff. However, low-risk bets like black and red only offer a similarly low payoff. The words coming from Cannon's mouth were swallowed up by the darkness. That darkness suddenly started to swirl, glittering. Ah. Lo and behold, look who it is. Oh. That's not good for canon, though, is it? Because isn't it when you witness the butterflies that something bad happens to you? Oh, ho, 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 ho. it was such a fantastical scene. Golden sparkling butterflies that hid in the shadows all over the boiler room. Yeah. Flapped their wings, twinkling beautifully, and gathered in the darkness, disappearing. Kanon continued speaking, directing his words at the darkness as it swallowed the butterflies up. But as the butterflies gathered in the darkness, they, perhaps, probably, no, they would certainly laugh. But Kanon continued to speak without faltering in the slightest. However, if you bet on something with lower probability, your payoff increases proportional to the risk. The master called succeeding dis the master called succeeding despite an astronomical risk a miracle. And called the astronomical payoff gained as a result magic. I have no interest in what kind of magic you and the master were seeking when you spun that roulette. But you forgot something. You forgot that in roulette there's a pocket that's neither black nor red. Roulette has a special pocket called Zero, which means that the house takes everything in certain variants of the game. The old green pocket. This means that all of the coins bound on the table will be swept up, just as though everyone has forfeit. I set my heart on just one thing. I decided that if Shannon were to be killed and I was left alive, I'd sacrifice this life of mine and bring this roulette of yours to ruin. This isn't one of the Master's rules. It certainly isn't one of yours. I made this roll myself. I'm not furniture anymore. I'm the zero on your roulette. Kanan's face, twisted with humiliation. It was clear that his defiance against his own weaknesses was being ridiculed somehow. Kanan's brow creased even further, and a fierce expression that he'd never shown to anyone appeared on his face. The hand grasping the hand was shaking. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Is he going to hit himself in the head? Because if, if I'm just going down the list of on the first Twilight, on the second Twilight, the first one where it talks about, like, how they're going to be injured, on the fourth Twilight, gouge the head and kill. Because on the third, it's those who remain shall praise my noble name, which, I mean... Badler has praised her name, saying, like, yeah, okay, witch stepped up to the challenge, all right. I don't know about the rest of them, but, like, the, I mean, at this point, I think they're all acknowledging that the, it's a lot bigger possibility than what they originally thought. But on the fourth twilight, gouge the head and kill. Is this, is this, is this all going, see, Cannon thinks he's being defiant, fucking up her roulette. But, in fact, is it all going according to plan? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The hand grasping the hatchet was shaking. The sweat became drops, which slid downward. 
It was clear that the emotion causing Kanan's hand to shake wasn't just anger. However, Kanan suppressed that emotion. I won't let your words lead me astray again. This is where the demon's roulette ends. Wait another thousand years in hell for your next summoner. Beatrice! When Kanan raised the hatchet and tried to dive into the darkness, the darkness definitely sneered. It sneered at that courage as if it were vulgar, lazy, futile, and meaningless. Oh! Oh! Cannon, his hatchet still held aloft. Couldn't take another step after that. With a clang, the hatchet that he'd been grasping fell and rolled on the floor. And following that, with a pair of thuds, Cannon's knees hit, left, then right. The hand, which looked like he was trying to catch the sky now that the hatchet had been dropped. That looked like he was trying to catch the sky now that the hatchet had been dropped, gradually lowered, landing on his chest. And the other hand did the same. Yeah, something impaled his head, right? Right there. It was a handle with a demonic design engraved in it. As Kenna looked down at his chest, the same type of weapon that had been stabbed into Ava and Hideyoshi's foreheads was... Wait, wait. The chest comes after the head, doesn't it? Ah, the chest does come after the head, right. Gouge the head and kill. Ava and Hideyoshi got their fucking heads gouged. Which is kind of weird because, like, the two that... Oh... Oh, on the second twilight, those who remain shall tear apart the two who are close. They weren't, like, physically torn apart or anything, and it wasn't those two being torn apart, but those two were torn apart from the main group. I get it. When they tear apart the two who are close, they were torn apart from the main group. Those two were now separate from everyone else. The two who were close were on their own, torn apart from the main group. Then those who that remained shall praise her name. Don't know exactly what that's referring to, but then gouge the head and kill. That's obviously what happened with Ava and Hideyoshi. Now gouge the chest and kill. That's happening to Canon. So now we got stomach, knee, and leg, and then Beatrice comes back. Okay. 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 <laughs> Canon was curled up in anguish, flesh, fresh blood dribbling from the corners of his mouth. It was makeup. Too extreme for Kanon's white skin. Around this scene, the glittering gold butterflies danced through the darkness, mesmerizing. It was a beautiful, beautiful dance. A funeral march of tribute, ridicule, and contempt for a single boy's self-sacrifice. Kanon had already been prepared for his own death, but although he could do nothing but accept the death he had received, he attempted one last measure of resistance. He grasped the handle of the weapon sticking into his chest with both hands. And gritting his teeth with an acute, unearthly pain, he pulled it out. For only a moment, a bright red spray gushed out. It made an unpleasant bloop sound. It probably resembled the sound of Kanan's soul as it was sucked into the swamp of the dead. Kanan's on! Someone! Eh! Kumasawa screamed at the incomprehensible sight in front of her. Kana was lying in a pool of blood. Kumasawa's heart was a complete mess. Ah, what a horrible fate. He wouldn't have been killed if I had been with him. Ah, what incredible luck. If I had been with him, I might have been killed too. As she screamed, her expression was filled with complete confusion. All of the muscles of her face were pulled up, almost as though she was smiling while crying. No one could have made fun of an expression like this. What is it, Kumasawa? Answer me, Kumasawa! The first one to dash in was Natsu, holding the rifle. Badler and Genji dashed in after her. Normally, they probably would have started discussing the origin of that violent stench filling the boiler room. But after they saw Kanan, who was lying on the ground as if he were drowning in an ocean of his own blood, the stench wasn't important anymore. Kanan! Answer me! Genji, bring Dr. Nanjo here! Natsu realized that even though Kanon was on the verge of death, he was still conscious, so he sent Genji to get the doctor. Natsu, holding the rifle aloft, faced the darkness in the center of the boiler room and shouted, Who is hiding over there? Come out quietly. 
If you don't come out from there, I'll shoot without mercy. Need light. And Nazi, let's light them up. Bella Thing quickly took a large flashlight from the tool shelf alongside the door and used its light to cut through the darkness Nazi was glaring into. The light only shone on mechanical looking piping in a door. The door had been left open a small crack. It was obvious that someone had left through there in a hurry. Hey Nazi, where does that door go? Genji? Where does that door lead to? The in the courtyard. Like hell I'd let you get away, you damn bastard! Bella let out a war cry as he slammed into the door. Cool air from outside suddenly rushed in. There were some thin, rough stairs leading up. Badly ran up them, shouting. Wait, badly -kun. It's dangerous to be on your own right now. Nancy was also rushing up the stairs, chasing after Badly. Yeah? They were in the courtyard. The courtyard of the mansion had been built strictly for lighting purposes, so it wasn't a very elegant place. Because it was surrounded on all sides, the air was calm and completely undisturbed, even though they could hear the sound of strong winds. There was only the gentle, sorrowful rain. As she ran through the cold and scattered raindrops, dashing up the stairs into the courtyard, Badly looked in every direction. Of course, the odds of him finding a suspicious silhouette just standing around nonchalantly were pretty much zero. Badly spun, looking all around. He turned again and again. He kept spinning until he almost lost his sense of direction. He prayed that he would see the culprit somewhere in the scenery. But there was no chance. All he saw as he spun was more and more of the mansion's heartless walls and windows. Furthermore, there were two entrances into the mansion from the courtyard, and neither of them were locked. Because the courtyard couldn't be entered from the outside from outside the mansion, the door has been built without locks. He didn't know which one they had left through. He had to give up. Badler pounded the wall with his fist, swearing. Badler Coon, you mustn't run ahead by yourself. Badler Coon? Badler pressed his forehead against the wall, which he had scratched his at with his fingernails as he cried. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! And Ava and Uncle Hideyoshi! And now Kanan-kun! You killed a full six people! And that wasn't enough, so you had to kill three more? Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? And Ava and Uncle Hideyoshi were always kind and fun. I just met Kanan yesterday, but I'm sure I'd have gotten along fine with him. Why did you kill them? Why? Why? You know when people die, they don't come back to life again, right? They aren't going to quickly sprout up again like bamboo shoots. Why'd you kill them? Why? Why? Ah! Badler was a boy who could understand the feelings of pain and regret in a person's heart. So he cried. With all his strength. Nazi, who always thought of Badler as a frank person, I was a little surprised to find he had this delicate side. And at the same time, she understood how easily hurt the heart of a young person could be. So she held him. Damn right. Nazi the Queen. It's alright. I will definitely protect you. George Kuhn, Maria Chan, and Jessica. As a mother, and as the representative of the Ushiromiya family. Ah! Badler, after sobbing into Nazi's chest for a while, wiped his tears with a bitter smile, as though he'd been like that the whole time, tried to appear as though he'd cried more than enough already. Anyway, let's go back down for now. Protecting ourselves is a higher priority than finding the culprit. Tomorrow the boat will arrive. After that happens, the police will come, and everything should be brought to light. There's no way the culprit can escape this island, no matter how much they struggle. That's right. The police come. The seagulls cry. Roll credits. The crime will be solved. But for some reason, Badler felt a slight sense of uneasiness, as if the seagulls would never cry again. That couldn't be true. When the typhoon passes, surely the life of the seagulls will return to the harbor again. Yeah, this is all gonna take place in this next night, isn't it? It's not all. It's, it's not gonna be like one night, the next night, the next night. I mean, shit, we're already down to, like, what, the fourth twilight by now? Right? Yeah. No, we're past the fifth twilight. Canon was the fifth twilight. Goddamn. So we're halfway through. We're halfway through the epitaph here. So, uh, we're, we're definitely, uh... Things are definitely picking up. For sure.